Hey everybody, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what we've done in the past and that's because I'm going to give you the list of settings for the shader that I use in Minecraft right now because I get asked about it all the time. So if that's what you're interested in, if you want your game to look like what mine does and you're okay using shaders and you got some pretty decent hardware, stick around because I'll get a good one for you. Uh, we're going to talk about the shader settings that I've been using for a little while now. You can see... Man, the water looks so good. The rays coming down from the moon, everything about this, absolutely beautiful uh, and not overly uh, demanding from my machine. Uh, granted, I do have a 4090 and a 13900K, but I firmly believe that with the right settings and a little bit of fine tuning, especially around the shadows, somebody just changed it. Somebody must've just slept, uh, especially around the shadows. Uh, you can get it to run and look absolutely beautiful. I, I think I have the same shader running on my son's machine upstairs, and he has an Intel Arc A770, uh, which is going to be a lot uh, lower in terms of performance compared to, like, my 4090, but he can still run this on a 1080p display, 120 FPS, no problem. So let's get right into it, okay? Uh, first, you're going to want to make sure OptiFine is installed, and the, I'm running Silder Shaders uh, Extreme Volumetric Lighting, uh, the 1.5 version get those installed and configured you can uh, you could find some other examples of how to download and install optifine and silders uh, out there and be careful uh do your due diligence and checking any link you click on before you click on it because there's some stuff out there people trying to fish for viruses that kind of thing so uh next you go to options my video settings are uh, pretty straightforward uh these are relative to the server so even if i push this up to 64 chunks for render distance it's not going to change anything on the server that i'm on right now uh, but that'll this will affect your your in-game uh, if you're playing single player that kind of thing so just keep that in mind uh, everything else in here is pretty straightforward I think uh, we'll look at all the other settings before we go into shaders go to quality here's everything that I have set up in here this for me is all pretty basic straightforward stuff I like to turn down FOV and distortion and not uh, to prevent some motion sickness for people that are watching uh, that kind of thing and then uh, performance this is how I have it set up in here the smooth FPS on or off I've toyed with it a little bit. It doesn't really, to me, seem to make a whole lot of difference, but anything to kind of improve performance to make sure we're squeezing out as many frames as possible, I think is important. Um, for details, I have all this stuff uh, set, I think pretty much to the, uh, the entry level uh, across the board, no animation changes. Uh, so that should all be pretty straightforward. And feel free to pause throughout the video if you need to grab specific settings for any of this. Uh, next, we'll go into shaders. And right here, I have Silders Vibrant Shaders. Uh, on the right side, this is all pretty much the default. I had shadow quality at 2x, but I was losing a lot of frames. There were a lot of entities on screen. Should we turn that down to 1x? That's okay. Uh, you can toy with that as you see fit. The big one, though, especially for water clarity, uh, is going to be found down here in the bottom right corner where it says Shader Options. Click on that bad boy. Uh, and I'm going to go through every single one of these. You can see every setting that I use across the board, okay? Anti-aliasing, this, I believe, is the default. You don't really have to change anything in there. Uh, bloom, I turn the bloom down a little bit. It just makes it easier to see in water. You still get that, uh, that kind of like water distortion effect, but it's not as extreme, which is kind of nice. Uh, one of the big ones is under color. I turn the brightness up a tiny bit, and the water colors, uh, I think, are huge. The alpha... Uh, I made it a little bluer, which is okay. And then under lighting, uh, the eye light adaptation up to 3.0. Uh, any of the green settings, the ones that have changed right there. Um, we'll go to depth of field. Some people like it. Some people don't. This is going to be a personal preference. But if you do turn it on, I would turn the blur amount to the minimum. It does add kind of a nice, uh, almost cyberpunky feel or like any of those kind of super hardcore story driven games skyrim etc where you get that kind of depth is is nice but you don't necessarily need it for minecraft to still look absolutely immaculate uh fog options underwater fog density at 100 and the color tint this i think is the biggest one that changes what you're dealing with underwater um this off makes it much easier to see and play underwater without uh getting rid of kind of that that under the water immersed feel but it makes it so much easier to see it. Uh, morning fog on. I like all that. Uh, motion blur, always off, no matter what. Always turn that off. Looks terrible otherwise. Uh, normal map stuff, all uh, set to default. The reflections, I still have all set to default. Uh, sky and lighting. I did turn on lens flares. God rays with the density at high gives that kind of like beams through the trees effect that I really like. And I do like the moonlight being bright at night, so it makes it a lot easier for stream to see, but that's going to be a personal preference kind of thing. Uh, under shadows, 
this is kind of a this is a big one uh i like ray trace shadows the shadow render distance being all the way up adds a lot of detail to distance but this shadows resolution one right here if you're having issues with frame rate try turning this down or if you're uh if you have a, a workhorse or maybe you're playing at 1440p or 1080p with a much uh, more powerful system you can turn that up and it won't be overly demanding you'll get uh, a little crisper edges on your your shadows which i think i like a lot um shading all this stuff is default uh the waving objects i slowed it down but turned the amplitude up a little bit because i like the feel the look of the world just like looking alive that to me was uh was one of the details about especially with silders that i really really enjoy uh so i definitely tuned that a little bit sorry about that let me get back into the, the settings uh the emissive light i turned that up a little bit so it's always just a little brighter depending on what you're what's going on around you uh, I thought that was pretty important to have, especially when you're in caves, you know, digging deep down, uh, making it dark enough that you could still, that it's like you feel like you're in the dark, but still bright enough that like viewership can see you're not losing detail or losing track of what you're doing, uh, that kind of thing. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, debug, you don't have to worry about damage flash on the white, white, white world. It's kind of funny, actually, if you've never looked at uh, this one. Everything kind of looks like it's made out of paper mache now. Don't do that setting. It's not. That's not a good one. Don't do that. Uh, but the rest of the settings should be pretty straightforward. And if you need to, just scroll back through the video. You can take a look at any any of the settings that are in there that um, that maybe you missed out on, that kind of thing. Uh, and it does genuinely make the game look just absolutely beautiful when you're flying around. Uh, the sun is out, so you can kind of get you know the, the sunlight bleeding through. You get a little bit of that lens flare going on just the movement of the trees everything just looks so 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 good and like i was saying before uh the underwater visibility for me is a big one uh because this just looks so much better than having the this this incredibly dark blue tint across the board i can actually see what is going on uh and i think for me it makes underwater just that much better being able to dig around if you drop items maybe you die and you need to recover stuff you still get that bloom glow from the skylight up above but it's not overwhelming just across the board the settings in general for underwater especially are really nice um but of course as you see fit go through and tune anything that you have in there if there's any of those settings that you think uh should be changed potentially or anything else uh right now silders is the only shader that i've used in minecraft i know that there are a ton of other ones that people really enjoy that do tons of little bits uh, maybe maybe better, maybe worse than what Silders does. You do still sometimes get like the light bleeding through, like the sun rays through if you're underground in a cave and things aren't rendering 100%. Uh, I think that's kind of unavoidable with the way that the settings are set up. If you want to get all the features of Silders, um, I think you're going to get some of those little issues uh, and they might be unavoidable. Um, as far as this goes, though, don't worry. You'll see soon. I appreciate it. Enjoy the little tour of what's uh, going on in the world right now uh, in Minecraft here. Do me a favor. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Appreciate it. Use code that you've bought. Use code.
that